Oi, Minizang, Konnichiwa, Samurai Engineer Desk. So in this uh, live stream lecture, uh, we'll uh, proceed with the continuation of this uh, strength uh, limit states. So we are talking about uh, the different uh, limit states uh, according to the code. So I think uh, we, uh, we are going to resume from 3.6 because we already uh, explained up to 3.5. Okay, so let us uh, browse through. But before that, I would like uh, somebody to uh, confirm that uh, our uh, today's setup of a live stream is uh, clear enough for our uh, uh, Ojo. So uh, please uh, confirm while uh, uh, we can we can have our. Uh, uh, breakfast uh, with our discussion. Okay. So let me take a look. Clear po. So according to Mark Anthony, okay, and Daniela, okay. So thank you. Shout out to uh, both of you. Therefore, let us uh, proceed. So we already discussed this uh, design method. There are two of them: working stress design and uh, the strength design. So. And today's uh, go-to design method is the strength design or the ultimate strength design uh, with the following advantages that we already discussed. Structural uh, safety, wherein uh, we have to get the ratio of FC prime by uh, FC or FY prime by FS. Usually, as you can uh, now notice, I think you already noticed it. We are um, using prime in order to we are using the prime in our symbol for example FC prime. FC the prime meaning it is on the compressive uh, side that is on the compressive side. And FC is uh, the the uh, concrete uh, on the on the uh, normal condition, while FY prime that is the reinforcement on the compression side. Okay, so and uh, we can we can uh, confirm. The actual uh, definition of uh, symbols. I am very much aware that uh, there are about five to six pages of symbols used in the code. So I I do not have time for each of and every one of them to browse even browse through it. That is uh, already time consuming. Six pages of uh, symbols. That's crazy. So let us uh, instead uh, uh, get to uh, search for the symbols that uh, we are just using. So for example, F FC prime. So look it up. FC, look it up. FY prime, look it up. So that is the, um, the efficient way to do it. So we have what uh, strength reduction factor that uh, we already learned so much. So these values generally vary from 0.9 as uh, it is also um, the same 
when we are talking of steel design so from 0.9 to uh, about 0.65 so any steel we are uh, using 0.9 0.75 right now but uh, actually these are the ratio values for uh, the uh, phi reduction factor okay 0.9 to 0.65 for some columns okay so there are two types of columns okay and uh, the same is true we will uh, talk about columns in uh, reinforced concrete and the same okay. so derivation of uh, beam expressions so we have to deal with it and uh, we already talked about it but uh, because it is uh, so important to clarify it in our head again and again repeatedly so let us take a look just for a moment okay let's take a look at it again uh, even uh, just uh, browsing about it so distances from uh, from neutral axis give us relative proportion okay of strains okay because uh, this strains vary uh, with respect to the distance from the neutral axis compression stresses vary approximately take note of the term tensile and or compression okay so we have to uh, be very careful to uh, imagine what does that mean in our cross-sectional area of the beam so right now we are talking about beam so imagine there is a beam cross-sectional area that is usually rectangular in shape so vary this compression stresses vary approximately in a straight line until the maximum stress equals about 0.5 so uh, if we have uh, arrived to the uh, application of uh, 0.5 fc prime to our uh, element so that is the uh, time that the straight line relationship of stress strain will start to vary okay take note about that very important 0.5 fc prime this is not uh, the case however after stress go higher when the ultimate load is reached the strain and stress variations are approximately as shown in the figure so so we have this uh, figure 3.1 here. So this is a figure. So the figure. So this is now the stress variation near the ultimate load condition. This is the stress variation. Okay. Okay. At ultimate load condition. Okay. The stress variation. This is strain. Strain is stress strain variation so near the ultimate load condition so the stress is not a straight line although the strain uh, is still a straight line but the stress is not so meaning we are now on the inelastic so there is no elasticity anymore we are on the plastic region okay that's why it is not straight line and uh, from uh, compressive stresses vary from zero at the neutral to the maximum value or the, the extreme fiber uh, that is uh, given and we logically explain that to everyone the actual stress variation the actual location of the neutral axis varies somewhat from beam to beam we have several examples of different size of beam that's why we know that the uh, neutral axis location varies okay. and depending on such variable as the magnitude and history of past loadings sinkage and creep of the concrete size and spacing of tension cracks speed of loading and so on so there are several elements that we need to understand however our uh, topic right now is just on the application of load okay not on the uh, uh, historical loading, not on the sinkage creep, size, spacing, tension crack, speed of loading, and so on. So just the uh, traditional loading.
Okay. If the shape of this stress uh, diagram were the same for every beam, it would be possible to derive a single uh, rational set of expressions for... Okay, take note. If they are the same for every beam, okay? So, uh, the same flexural behavior. Because of this uh, stress variation, however, it is unnecessary to base the strength design on the combination of jury and test result. So, we cannot uh, deal with the pure jury. This is again and again, uh, repeatedly telling everyone, jury meaning that is the scientific closed form solution. Okay? And uh, since we are complementing it, we complement it with the experience, the actual observation, the experiments. So, that's uh, when the uh, uncertainty uh, happens. However, although there, there is uncertainty, we, uh, we are uh, willing and acceptance, we are acceptance of this fact because we don't have any other alternative for this. This is the best that we have. So we have to use it. Although the uh, actual stress this is distribution given in uh, figure uh, 3.2 may be seem to be important in practice in assumed shape okay, can be used. So I already uh, uh, yeah, explained this. So not only this is the model. This is the real thing that happened. Okay? As we uh, shown on the previous figure, but we model it by a rectangle. Okay? We model it by a rectangle. One of the conditions is that the area is equal and the location of centroids are equal for both of these. Okay? However, the width will not be equal because the width here is C. The width of the rectangle is A. But we have the what the relationship between A and C. Okay? Wherein A is equal to beta 1 times C. Okay? And we have the uh, equation for beta 1. This is the equation for beta 1. Beta 1's value is from a minimum of 0.65 up to 0.85. Depending upon the FC prime value. <coughs> hey, sorry about that. Okay. So let's uh, continue. Okay. If the concrete is uh, assumed to cross at a strain of about 0 0.003, so very important value, that we can utilize whenever we are uh, dealing with problem solving, but there are uh, uh, what short or lack of given, so we can use this or we can use 0.002. Okay, uh, so the, this value is a uh, little bit uh, conservative and to still yield at uh, FY, it is possible to make reasonable derivation of big formulas without knowing the exact stress distribution. Okay? Without knowing the exact... Okay? Think about that. We, it is possible, but again, it is not uh, with high accuracy. So, it is now our burden as an engineer as a student to uh, search for a better and better model so you already know how to uh, use the numerical method okay numerical analysis you can use the numerical analysis in order to model these things okay so the uh, <clears throat> uh paper by uh, Whitney. So Whitney is the one who discovered or uh, proposed this type of model, rectangular model. That is Whitney. Okay? And he stated that uh, an equivalent rectangular block of intensity 0.85 Fc prime that uh, we are uh, actually using with a depth A 
which is equal to beta 1 times C. So the area of this uh, rectangular should be equal and also we have so much explanation that uh, we already discussed uh, repeatedly. Okay. So but uh, if we are, we are going to use is a unit, this is the, this is the formula for is a unit. And uh, we we uh, explained to everyone that 30 MP is supposed to be 27.8 MP if you convert the value. Okay? If you convert the value of what? This is the value. 4,000 PSI. If you convert 4,000 PSI, you can confirm it using your calculator. So that uh, the value is not actually 30 MP. So we uh, told you about that. So, therefore, now we just what use the uh, the reduction factor, okay? So, based on this assumptions, static uh, equation can easily be written for the sum of horizontal forces for the uh, resisting moment produced by the internal couple. This uh, expression can then be solved separately for A and for the moment MN. We are uh, doing this repeatedly. Okay? A very clear statement should be made here regarding the term MN because it otherwise can be confusing for the reader. MN is defined as the theoretical or nominal resisting moment of the a section. The theoretical, that is theoretical or nominal. Now, it was stated that the usable strength of the member equals its theoretical strength times the strength reduction factor. We need to multiply that to reduction factor. Okay, So we really need the uh, the usable strength, this is the usable strength or the design strength, phi times mn. That is the usable strength. It must be at least uh, equal to calculated factored moment, mu, okay, at least equal to, meaning mu can be equal or less than phi mn, okay. So that is uh, our design criteria. So, MN is the uh, requirement of the load. MN is the requirement of the load. And uh, MU, rather. MU is the requirement of the load. MN times phi is our material capability, capacity. Okay? So, we talk about this formula that you have to memorize. You have to memorize this thing. 0.85 FC prime AB is equal to oh, okay, so there are so many times that we already use that but we have to divide both sides in order to find out the value of A, okay so divide both sides by 0.85 FC prime times B we have this value equation and uh, this equation we can replace it by this equation after defining, so we have to define what? What is this? Percentage of tensile steel. Take note. Tensile steel, not the total amount of steel. Only the tensile part of steel. Okay, understood? Do we follow? Only the tensile part of steel. Okay. So, that is AS. Because the uh, compressive steel is uh, marked as AS prime. Okay? AS prime is the compressive side of steel. Okay? So AS is the uh, tensile steel divided by BD. BD is the the uh, the uh, effective cross-sectional cross, uh, cross-sectional area of the actually BH but uh, we, are, we are just using BD. Because the uh, the uh, distance from the uh, the center of uh, tensile steel up to the uh, extreme up to the extreme uh, tension fiber is just the what the uh, concrete cover that is the covering for the 
steel bars. Okay. And after using this uh, deviation, we have the, that row. We introduce the row here. Row. So row FYD over 0.85 FC prime. Okay. So then after that, uh, it will lead well before the concrete reaches its ultimate strength. The value of the nominal uh, moment can be written as so. Again, the same. We already used this equation several times in our examples. And the usable uh, flexural strength now multiply this equation by phi. Okay. So, uh, meaning we are using here the strength design, not the ASD. We are using strength design here. We can still use ASD according to the code, but it is not uh, really recommended for up actual application. It is just allowed. Okay? They are still allowing to use it, but it is not recommended anymore. And uh, if we substitute into the expression, this expression, so equation T just one. The value previously obtained for uh, A, so just replace, uh, just substitute this one. This equation, actually this one, into this equation. So what will happen? Phi MN or uh, MU is equal to uh, phi bd squared fy rho quantity you have to memorize this memorize equation 3 that's why memorize equation 3 that's 2 okay so phi bd squared fy rho quantity 1 minus uh, rho fy over 1.7 fc prime okay so oh, this is how we have to memorize. Okay. So we already have several samples that we use that here like this. We already use this. Okay. This uh, model. This is our model. Okay. Recall that uh, D is just up to the center of the or centroid of the the uh, steel tension member. Okay. Uh, next, we have to replace the uh, AS with rho BD. It note, just replace it, so we will come up with a particular, this one. So, in order to what? Solve the value of rho. We are going to solve the value of rho. Okay, so we have the following result. Equation number three, that's three. We have to memorize this also. Okay. So we have to memorize this. So if I have a paper, I will uh, try to uh, write it down. Okay. We can write it down to our uh, paper so that uh, we can use it afterwards. Okay, so let us write down. So there are. Ah, so we have to memorize that. So rho again is equal to 0.85 FC prime over FY 1 minus square root of 1 minus 2 RN. Okay, RN. Okay over uh, 0.85 FC prime. Okay. So, we have that. So, with uh, the uh, memorization of this formula, we can shorten up our solution. We can shorten up our solution because uh, from uh, equation 3 does 2 to this, there are a lot of simplification that we have to do okay, from uh, this equation. 
okay so you have to uh, always uh, uh, remember that rho is equal to as over bd okay and uh, phi mn is equal to mu okay which is equal to phi as fy and d minus a over 2 but this can also be equal to pi b d squared f y rho 1 minus rho f y over 1.7 f c right okay so that's uh, those are the uh, set of formulas that we need to now let's uh uh, because um, that uh, determination of what is that uh, here okay instead of su substituting this equation for a row when a rectangular uh, sections are involved the reader will find tables 8.8 .8 to 8.13 in appendix of this to be the quiet convenient so we can also use 1.8 to 1.13 tables okay uh, instead of using this equation, okay? <clears throat> For uh, SI units, refer to tables B.8 and B.9 in appendix B. So, there are appendix and I will show you. Uh, look it up on the same, on the same PDF. Look it up on the same PDF. We have an appendix A and appendix B. So, So appendix A for the tables 8.8 to 8.30. So appendix A. So table. This is graph. Where is the table? Table number. Table 8.13. 8.8 .8. so these are the table okay so from this uh, table <coughs> hi excuse me so this is a table that uh, the author is talking about mm. already have the value of rho the value of mu over uh, 5 bd squared okay so and so on okay so you already collected gathered those values into a table every value of what row okay from what from uh, row is equal to 0 0.002 so that is the what that is the row if you are using grade 60 we are using grade 60, that is zero, point zero zero two, And that is the lowest or the minimum row for the table here. Okay. And there are several amount of row up to how much. So still uh, we have different values of row. We are now on point zero one four. Okay. 0 0.014 amount of rho that means the uh, tensile still is 1.4 percent that is what we mean by that just multiply by 100 so you can convert it to percent okay so imagine that value okay so again from 0 0.002 up to Rho of 0 0.0203. So this is about how much? About 2%. So that um, is the level, the range of values. 0 0.002 up to 0 0.02. Okay? From, from, uh, from 0.2% to 2% still. Okay? Uh, ratio. Okay? 
So, these are the said tables up to A13. So, there are several what? Several given values for FY, FC prime, and so on. Okay. So, for every values. He already calculated, imagine that, using table. But, you cannot do it in the exam or the in the uh, in the board exam because this uh, table is not given in the board exam okay and also in our exam that is not given so you have to memorize the formula okay so that table is actually the table that uh, being looked upon by architects Okay. So they, they uh, I think they are not trained to compute, they are not trained to calculate this, but they just look it up from the table. Okay, so, and because uh, the values on the table came from real result of computation, that's why architect can also specify this uh, analysis and design. They can design and analyze because they have this type of tables. Okay. okay. So that's uh, is the concrete example of table. Okay. So for uh, the SI unit uh, we are going to show you the Appendix B. Appendix B. Okay, this is the Appendix B. Okay. So, when you are going to use the SA unit, you are going to use this. Okay. So, FC prime. Okay. Okay. Usually, usual values of FC prime. Values of modulus of elasticity for normal weight concrete. Okay? Normal weight concrete. So, the value for modulus of elasticity of of uh, steel is equal to 200 gigapascal. But, when you are dealing with uh, concrete take note in this table the value of modulus of elasticity varies with respect to what? with respect to the FC prime varies okay so as the value of FC prime increase the value of modulus of elasticity increase that is not true when we are looking at steel that is not true the uh, value of modulus of elasticity of steel is constant for any type of steel. Okay? So there are several types of steel that uh, we talk about. Uh, there are plenty of. But the modulus of elasticity remains the same. That's why steel is one of the uh, uh, amazing material. Okay, so designation, diameter, areas, perimeter, of uh, bars, bar sizes. Okay, so I have my own, I uh, made my own Excel file of this. So sizes, so reinforcing bar, grades. Okay, okay, so we usually use 420. This is the most popular in the Philippines, in our country. 420 or 300. Grade 300 and grade 420. Okay. 420. 420. 300. Okay. So, what about this one? Areas of group standard metric. Metric bars. So, again... So, for areas, okay, so computing the areas, then, 
So, instead of using the formula, they tabulated it. So, these are the tables that architects know about. That's why they can also specify and analyze structural elements. Okay. Minimum width. Size of bars. Okay. So, in mm. Okay. Minimum beam width. Okay. So, so, they even have this. While uh, we, civil engineers, open times, calculate this, compute this. Repeatedly, we repeatedly com compute this. Okay. Spacing. Spacing of bars in slab. So, these are uh, the tables that we have here. So, let's go back to our discussion on uh, page... Okay, so this one. So we are here. Okay. So, 3.5. Strains. So, now, we have to talk about the strains. So, we already, again, talk about this, but uh, because this is uh, too important, we have to uh, repeat this again and again. As I previously mentioned, the code states that the strains in concrete members in their reinforcement are to be assumed to vary directly with distance. We already know that. Okay, okay so section 10.2.3 in the code states that the maximum usable strain in the extreme compression okay, maximum strain in the extreme compression fiber of a flexural member is 0 0.003 so oh, we already know that also finally okay finally section that is uh, we are talking of maximum we are talking of maximum Sometimes we use 0 0.002. Okay, so but that is the maximum. So we have to use this in order to uh, to derive some formula. We have to use that. Okay. So section 10.3.3, okay, grade 60, that is what I'm talking about. What happened? What happened is it became 0 0.002. Okay. Okay, that is the value. Okay. So, for grade 60 reinforcement. And uh, for all pre-stressed. When uh, we go to the pre-stressed, that is also the, the same value. So, that is also the strain in the steel at the balance condition. Theoretically, for 60, we say the steel it equals FY over ES equal to 60. KSI divided by uh, 29. So, that is 0.002. 07. Okay. So, this is the second time that the book, this is the second time that the book uh, explained this and this is uh, what? Three or four times that uh, I explained this. Okay. So, even the author of the book is repeatedly re what discussing about the same thing. So, again, we have this formula. Alpha is equal to beta 1 times C. Okay. So, then the distance C from the extreme concrete compression fiber to the neutral is just uh, what? Divide both sides by beta 1. So, you have what? C is equal to o A over beta 1. So, meaning C is larger than A. Okay. So, as you can see, on the, as we already several times being shown upon by the author of the, what, the model, of the rectangular model. Okay. 
So, let us have an example, 3.1. Okay? To determine the values of A, C, and strain, okay? Tens tensile strain, okay? For the beam shown in the figure, wherein Fy is equal to 60, okay? PSI. 60, grade 60, KSI, no? And uh, Fc prime is equal to 3,000. Okay. So, using our formula here, just plug it in. So, AS, FY, so you have all these values. Okay. Because of the given, this is the given figure. Okay. What do we need? What do we learn? What do we know from this given? We know the we know the size of the section. We know the size of the steel bars. Therefore, we can therefore we can analyze. Okay, when we know the size of the steel bars, we know the size of the the beam. We can analyze. Okay, how much is the uh, capacity of the beam? Okay, so we can analyze what the uh, couple or the MN. Okay, so, but uh, what we are being asked in this problem is the value of strain. Okay, so let us therefore take a look. So, three, so three uh, units of number nine bars. Okay, so number nine bars, we have what? Uh, one square inch, okay, one square inch for number nine bar. So, there are three, so three square inch, the total area, okay. So, therefore, if you are using this uh, uh, formula, AS is equal to three, okay. FY, what is FY? Given, 60 KSI. FC prime, given, so three KSI. Constant, 0.85. B, is given here uh, the width okay you cannot see the width so that is the width 14 so given so you can just plug it in all of them so you can find out the value of a so after finding out the value of a you have to determine the value of beta 1 okay we have the formula for beta 1 okay but here we don't need don't need to use the formula because the value of of uh, FC prime is less than 4,000 or less than 3,000 or actually equal to 3,000. So if it is uh, equal to 3,000, we use the value 0.85. Okay? We use the value 0.85. Therefore, we can solve the value of C because we already find out the value of A Value of A, then uh, beta 1, so just divide. So we have this one, okay? Value of... So the value of beta 1 is not always 0.85. Just like what I've said, 0.85 is the maximum. 0.65 is the minimum. So the range is 0.65 to 0.85. And you have to compute it, okay? Now, uh, how to determine the uh, value of the strain? So, the value of strain is from this formula. Okay? Just use this formula. Okay? D minus C over C times quantity uh, 0.003. Okay? Then you can get this value. This is our strain. The actual strain on this uh, problem. So, this value of strain is much greater than the yield strain of 0.002. This is an indication of tactile behavior of the beam. Of course, because the steel is well into its yield plateau before concrete crosses. Okay? So, tactile type. So, what do you mean by tactile type? Controls. As uh, we already know in steel design, we have uh, different type, types of control. Controlling uh, uh, mode. Okay? We have there four for different control modes. We have what? The yield, rupture, 
we have black shear and we have uh, bearing. So, similarly, we have different types for reinforced concrete. Okay? Here, we have what? Ductile and uh, the other one is what? Here. We have balance, tension control, and compression control. So, there are three types. There are three types here. here. Balance, tension control, okay, compression control. Okay, take a look. There are three. While on steel design, we have four. Okay, we have four. Okay. So, that is any question from this uh, from this uh, example? Any question? There are none. So let's uh, proceed further. So just uh, before we proceed, I would like to tell you this one. How do we get that equation? How do we get this uh, equation? So we get this equation because of this. This figure. 0 0.003 on the compressive side. Then uh, 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 strain. Tens tensile strain on the lower part. So by just taking the ratio and proportion. So D minus C and C. That's why ratio and proportion. Just take the ratio and proportion. Okay? So, therefore, actually, I do not uh, memorize this one because you can easily get it from the figure. Just uh, remember that the upper part, meaning the compressive strain is 0 0.003. Okay? And then, the uh, tensile strain is epsilon sub t. So, solve for epsilon sub t. If you know c and d minus c. How to determine c? You can because you have c is equal to a over beta 1. Okay? While d is given, given value. So, therefore, we can solve for um, tensile strain, strain. Okay? So, again, uh, let's uh, move on. 3.6 balance section. So, there are three uh, sections. Balance steel ratio, we call that balance section. It is one of which the tensile steel will theoretically just reach its yield point at the same time. Still, will reach its gel point at the same time the extreme compression concrete fibers attain a strain equal to 0 0.003. Right? So as the yield on the compression side of the concrete reaches 0 0.003 exactly at the same time the uh, uh, tensile steel will theoretically reach its yield point. That is what we mean by balance. Okay. Balance condition. Okay. Okay. Any question? Should a flexural member so design that it has a balance still ratio or uh, be a member whose compression side controls? Okay. If the compression side controls, meaning its compression strain reaches 0 0.003 before. So, compression side controls if the compression side reaches okay, the value 0 0.003 first before the yield of steel. That is what we mean by compression control. What about tension control? The steel, the tension, the tensile uh, uh, 
uh, still reaches yield point first before the uh, compressive part reaches 0 0.003 uh, 0 0 0 3 uh, strain okay so that is what we mean by tension control compression control balance control okay okay again very important okay if we have the uh, compression control meaning the compression strain reaches 0 0.003 okay first the member can suddenly fail without warning take note of this okay very important this is the reason why okay the reason why we do not usually do our design method in this section we usually do the design on the tension control rather than compression control because again the member can suddenly fail without warning if we are on the compression control okay because the element reaches the compressive strain of 0 0.003 first and uh, if the element reaches that it will begin to begin to what to crumble it will be crushed okay and crushing it without warning okay okay so why because as the load on such a member increase its deflection will usually not be particularly noticeable we cannot notice the sag we cannot notice the deflection we cannot notice the angle oh. that's why it will fail without warning we cannot see it in our eyes with our own eyes we cannot see it we cannot observe okay okay so uh, even though the concrete is highly stressed in compression and failure will probably occur without warning to users of the structure these members are compression controlled and are referred to as brittle members so that is what we mean by brittle control brittle mem members that's why up to this section up to this uh, discussion we are designing under tactile right we are designing tactile so we usually design under that but the caveat here is that although that is the usual thing to do compression control is not being banned it is not prohibited it is not prohibited but it is not recommended so the engineer should use it with caution you have to use it with caution if you use the compression control you have to use it with caution okay you have to be very sure what you are doing that is the uh, idea okay. okay obviously such member must be avoided okay from the uh, uh, point of view of this author okay we must avoid it we do not want to recommend it but okay it is not prohibited okay we have to avoid it but it is not prohibited So, section 10.3.4 of the code states that the member whose computed tensile strains are equal to or greater than 0 0.005. At the same time, the concrete strain is 0 0.003 are to be referred to as tension control section. Take note. Okay. So, if we are able to compute tensile strains up to or greater than 0 0.005 greater greater than okay so meaning what do you call 
the uh, situation, what do you call the situation where in the tensile strain is from 0 0.003 up to 0 0.005? Because 0 0.005 and greater amount of strain is what we call tension control. And and uh, those with uh, less than 0 0.003, that is compression control. Therefore, what do we what do we call the uh, situation wherein 0 0.003 up to 0 0.005 uh, tension strain, tensile strain? What do we call that? That is what we call the balance section or intermediate. Okay, that is the balance section or intermediate section. Okay. So we already know the tension control. We already know compression control. So what we have here. Furthermore, uh, when we are uh, using the uh, tension control, because there is the deflection, there is a larger amount of angle change in angle, so we can see that the beam deflects. You can see, for example, the beam. You can see the deflection of beam like this. Oh, there is a sag, there is a deflection, there is a angle. So, we can notice. Oh. So, after noticing that, therefore, we can what? We can give warning to the occupancy or occupants of the building to vacate the building because of presence of that okay and you have to compute you have to compute the what you have to compute the the deflection the, the maximum deflection so and verify it so after you notice it that there is a deflection compute the deflection that uh, must be the maximum then it is very easy to to uh, what to uh, verify it in real life, in actual, because uh, you can what? You can measure the height of the different points in the build, in the beam. So then you can what? You can you can uh, draw it graphically, then estimate, then uh, then uh, compare to your maximum deflection. Okay, so if uh, the beam reaches the maximum deflection, therefore you have to you have to uh, vacate the building. You have to uh, issue an order to vacate the building. If you are an engineer, you can issue the order. Okay, then the uh, deflection is actually what we call performance limit state. Okay, that is not uh, strength limit state, but performance limit state. But it is also related to strength limited state. Okay. So, for such uh, members still yield before the compression site crashes and deflection will be large, giving users warning of impending failure. Furthermore, members with uh, tensile strain greater than 0 0.005 are considered to be fully ductile. So, ductile members, that is ductile. So, there are two types, ductile members and brittle members. Okay. okay. So, the uh, ACI choose the uh, 0 0.005 value for uh, uh, tensile strain to apply to all types of steel permitted by the code whether uh, regular or pre-stressed. The code uh, further states that the members that have uh, net uh, steel strain of uh, epsilon T values between uh, yield strain and 0 0.005 <coughs> okay is what we call the transition region. So, uh, that is the balance, okay? Transition between the compression and tension. So, that's all about the different types of control modes. Okay?
What about the strength reduction factors? So, we can view the strength reduction factors. So, 3.7 like this. So, these are the values of uh, tension reduction, the reduction factors. This is true for any type of design. Lumber, timber, uh, reinforced concrete, steel design. So, so 0.9 for tension control. 0.75 for shear. We already use this on steel design. 0.75 shear is also 0.75 for torsion. Okay. 0.65 or 0.75 per column. So there are two types of column, 0.65 or 0.75. Also, there are two types here, 0.65 or 0.75, 2.9 per column supporting very small axle loads. So there is a very small axle load. We are going to have the what, transition also, transition. So we have to interpolate, we have to interpolate the value from 0.75 to 0.9. That, that is also for column. So these are for column. The next one is also for column. But here, we have for bearing. So bearing is 0.65. Okay? And this is also on our steel design. So I am recalling. Can you confirm it that uh, we use the the point seventy five for bearing on steel steel uh, design? So please uh, take a look at that. So you can uh, write it down. You can write it down. The. Uh, Recommended values for reduction factor. Okay. So we have that. Very important is this figure. Very important. So this is uh, what we mean by two types of column. There is a column that we call spiral. Okay. Spiral and other type of column so spiral column and the rest of the type of columns so spiral is 0 0.75 up to 0 0.9 so other types of column 0 0.65 up to 0 0.9 so this is the value for 0 0.9 this point 0 0.9 as you can see 0 0.002 is the starting point and up to 0 0.005 okay uh, as explained okay so that is our value for tensile strain 0 0.002 to 0 0.005 that is the transition region that is the transition so transition from the what from the uh, from the compression control, transition, then uh, tension control. Okay? Uh, yeah, compression control, transition, tension control. Okay. So that's about it. So these are the uh, formula. If you don't like to use that graph, you can solve this for spiral and for the other types. That this is the what? The um, what you call the uh, values. This is the equation for these lines. This line, one and two. So these two lines, equation of a straight line. So from uh, algebra, from uh, analytic geometry, equation equation of line. So these are the two equation of lines that I show you. Okay. So again, you can use this instead. Instead of this one, you can use this instead. The same. 
the same is true for a spiral and for other kind. But uh, these are only for Coulomb. We are right now currently talking about beam. So we are not yet on the Coulomb. So I am just uh, explaining these things. Okay. So moment. What about the moment capacity versus uh, rho? We already know what do we mean by rho. Rho is the steel ratio. Tensile steel ratio. So this is the graph. Okay. Of our values. Okay. okay. So we can also use this. Okay. Minimum percentage of steel. So minimum percentage of steel as uh, we uh, have the appendix A, we saw the minimum to be 0.002. Okay. okay, so Actually, another method mode of uh, failure can occur in a very lightly reinforced beams. Okay? If the ultimate resisting moment of the section is less than its cracking moment, okay. So, well, the first topic that we have here is the cracking moment. Okay? The section will fail immediately with a. So, the value of cracking moment is about the 0.25 to 0.33 of the uh, ultimate. Okay. So, this is what we have. This type of failure may uh, occur without warning to prevent such a possibility. Uh, ACI is based by certain minimum amount of reinforcing that must be used. So, we can use this formula. Okay? In order to find out the minimum value of reinforcement. Okay? This is the formula. Either of one of these. Okay? This one or this one. You can, in is a unit, you can use this one or this one. Okay? It's a unit. 1.4 divided by Fy. Okay. 1.4 divided by Fy. That is our uh, stress. Okay. Just multiply by BW times D. Okay. We have that uh, minimum. Okay. What do you mean by BW? That is the web width. Width of web. Okay. Web width. Okay. Okay. So we have that. Uh, rho to be computed, but this is what? This is for minimum. So, uh, so actually, the rho value is 1.4 divided by Fy. So, uh, if you, we can, we can have the estimate, we can have the estimate using our calculator, so I will show you. For example, uh, what uh, 420 and 300 so there are two two types so 400 and 420 so i will show you the calculator so calculators here For example, 1.4, that is the formula, okay, so divide by Fy. Fy could be what? 420. Do you follow? 420 megapascal. So, the value of this is 0 0.003333. Okay? That is what we mean by this result. Okay? So, 0 0.003333. Okay. Minimum, that is the minimum. So, if Fy is, for example, 
y p pues 1.4 divided by 300 okay for example if pues 300 so the value is 0.0046666 okay Okay. So, amount of FY. Okay. So, it depends on the amount of FY. Do you follow? So, what about the other one? So, this one, the other one. The square root of FC prime divided by 4 FY. So, for example, for example, 420 is FY, then... Uh, 3,000 is FC prime. So, let us use that. Given. So, square root of 3,000. So, 3,000. What is the equivalent of 3,000? The equivalent of 3,000 in, ano, uh, in, uh, uh, SI unit. Okay, what is the equivalent of 3,000 in this unit? So, we have to, what, 270? I think, uh, 27. 27. Okay, so 27. Then, divide by 4. Divide by FY, which is 420. This is what? 0 0.003. 0 0.003. 0 0 the same with 1.4 divided by FY. 0 0.003. Okay? So, this is the minimum that you have to design for the, for the BIM. 0 0.003 minimum. That is way, way small value of steel. So, you can uh, use that actually 0.2% up to 2% steel. So, that is our range of value. So, we can calculate that. Balance still percentage, okay? So for balance, we can have our uh, example for balance. Balance still percentage, okay? So still modulus of elasticity twenty nine thousand uh, ksi. So you can use this. Then this is the value. If we are using English units, so 87,000 divided by 87,000 plus FY. Okay. If we are using SI unit, the value is C is equal to 600 over 600 plus FY times D. You have to multiply it by D. Okay. That is for the value of C. Take a look. This is the value for C. Okay. 600 over 600 plus FY. So, that is for S. S a unit. 600 over 600 plus FY. Okay. This is what we mean by that. Okay. That, uh, this one. This value. Okay. Value of C. Okay, so sample problems, therefore, any question? So we are going to uh, use our sample problems, but before that, uh, any question? Any question with regards to this? So, we already talk about this, talk about this, talk about this, and we just, uh, what, substituted. So, this is the balanced steel ratio. Balanced steel ratio, we call P, rho B, rho sub B. Rho 
So B, that is the balance, still ratio. Okay. That is 0.85 beta 1 Fc prime over Fy. Okay. While if you are using this one, so balance, you can write down, you have to memorize that. So balance, uh, still ratio is 0.85 beta 1, okay, Fc prime over Fy. Then 600 over 600 plus Fy. So, when you are going to solve for C, that is 600 over 600 plus Fy multiplied by D. Okay? Any question? Any question? Okay. Values of uh, balance still uh, ratio can easily be calculated. Okay? But it is also there on Appendix A, Table A7. For uh, SA unit, that is Appendix B, Table B7. The previous codes, the old, old codes, limited flexural members to 75% of the balance steel ratio. Okay? So we are actually using this. 75% okay? of the balance steel ratio. Okay. However, this approach was changed in 2002 code to the new philosophy. Okay. So, 2002. Okay. Explained in section 3.7 whereby the member capacity is penalized by reducing the uh, phi reduction factor when they strain in the reinforcing steel at ultimate is less than point. Okay. This is how this is being okay. So, we can also use this approach, okay. Rather than using the fixed value for uh, what flexural uh, member, okay. Oh, but uh, if not if not a given you can use this, you can still use this 0 0.75 0 0.75 of row balance okay this uh, statement will become apparent after we talk about the example so our next uh, section 3.10 would be the different uh, exa example problem solving okay any question any question, I would like to cut our uh, live stream right here and just uh, re-enter our uh, next live stream. I just would like to what? To separate the video. I just like to separate the video for lecture and for problem solving. So, if there are any questions, so let's go to the to the next live stream. So, again, this is uh, Dr. Ripi, Preaching Engineering for Nation.